I, I have tried my best um, uh, to just, just. I, I'm still just shocked that we even having a runoff in Georgia uh, between U.S. Senator Raphael Warnock uh, and this nutcase Herschel Walker. Um, folks, he was at a rally. And he was at a rally yesterday, and, and, and the topic dealt with gas emissions and green new energy and all of this. And I just got to play this video, and I can't wait to hear what Larry, Rebecca, and Michael has to say. Because what I heard, it, it this is just stupid. Okay, y'all ready? Watch this. I can promise you, Iran, Russia, and they're not talking about trying to charge a tank out in the desert. They're talking about war. And let me tell you this either. If we was ready for the green agenda, I'll raise my hand right now, but we're not ready right now. So don't let them fool you like this is a new agenda. This is not a new agenda. We're not prepared. We're not ready right now. What we need to do is keep having those gas guzzling cars because we got the good emission out of those cars. We're doing the best thing that we can, but we need help. We need help, and those other people not helping us, China not helping us, India not helping us, but yet we're going to do it all because they're spending your money. I can promise you, Iran, Russia, and they're not talking. We've got the good. <laughs> I'm going to play that again because I, I think some of y'all thought I was joking. Y'all, this is not an SNL skit. This is not an actor portraying um, Herschel Walker as if he's a Fat Albert character. This is literally Herschel Walker speaking at a rally. No lie, y'all. Can we play one more time? I can promise you, Iran, Russia, and they're not talking about trying to charge a tank out in the desert. They're talking about war. And let me tell you this either. If we was ready for the green agenda, I'll raise my hand right now, but we're not ready right now. So don't let them fool you like this is a new agenda. This is not a new agenda. We're not prepared. We're not ready right now. What we need to do is keep having those gas guzzling cars because we got the good emission out of those cars. We're doing the best thing that we can, but we need help. We need help, and those other people not helping us, China not helping us, India not helping us, but yet we're going to do it all because they're spending your money. I can promise you, Iran, Russia, and they're not. Okay. <sighs> Rebecca, we've got the good emissions onto our cars. So what? <laughs> I'm still trying to understand what I just watched. Like, I heard him say, we're not ready for the Green New Deal because we're just not ready yet. We have the good gas guzzling cars and we got emissions. So, so far, okay, yeah, we do have these gas guzzling cars and we have emissions. But I, I, I don't understand the point here. Like, really, does he have family? Does he have friends? I would be so embarrassed. Like His, his son told us, why this fool running? Who does he show up next week for at the Thanksgiving meal? If I said something like that and then I showed up for Thanksgiving next week with my family, I wouldn't hear the end of it. I, I just I just don't understand anymore. Like I get the whole, you know, he was running for power, great, but I, I just don't understand right now. This just doesn't make sense to me. Like I, I just like my brain is still like if you saw like my face. Like, my, I, I, now I sound like him. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Herschel. Uh, Michael, I he, sound like you. Michael, his was so, so nuts. Uh, well, we not ready for it. I'll be the first one to raise my hand. We not ready for the, we're not ready for the Green Deal because Republicans are blocking it. Because they're beholden to fossil fuel industry. If they actually get the hell out of the way and make the commitment and put the resources, then we're not having this issue. Then we're not behind. Look, I saw a tweet the other day from a Daily Caller who was trying to criticize America, criticize Democrats because China is now the leader in solar panels. I'm sorry. I can remember when a Democratic president 
put some solar panels on top of the White House and was ridiculed by Republicans left and right. And then when Ronald Reagan became president, he took the solar panels down that Jimmy Carter put up. And guess what? Solar panels, they are an American uh, invention. And so here you got Republicans and conservatives. Well, uh, here's a doggone shame that China is now the leading manufacturer of solar panels in, uh, in the world because Republicans ridiculed solar panels. That's why. I have a headache from listening to him trying to figure out what he was saying. The first, the first thing it was, I was thinking about was the, uh, remember that old commercial, I'm getting an Excedrin headache. I mean, as my as my other colleague just mentioned, he, he's an embarrassment. The fact that more than 1.9 million people voted for this clown, and I hate calling another brother a clown, but if the shoe fits, you got to put the shoe on. He's a clown. And 1.9 million people walked into that ballot and said, I want him to represent me in the United States Senate. Wow. I, I, I sit here. Um, OK, OK, I, I got I got I got to do one more, Larry. And again, uh, I don't know what the hell Harris Faulkner is doing on, on Fox News. I got no idea. Um, so y'all gonna love this one. OK, uh, this like this, like the, 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 the you know, <laughs> politics for dummies greatest hits. I don't know what it is. All right. So watch this here was anyone that was running. They endorsed me because they knew I was going to have their backs. They knew that I would always stand up for them. The Georgia people know I would stand up for them. And I, I thank Governor Kemp for winning again because he's done some great things for the state. Well, Governor Kemp, is uh, he, he's helping me to run as well. There's a lot of people that believes in this country. They believe in the people. And that's who I believe in. I believe in the people. And from what I've read in the Constitution, it said, we the people, not we the government. And Senator, why not want the government to control your life? And uh, that's one of the things I do not want. I think right now the government has shown they're going to spend your money. They're going to raise your taxes. They're going to give you more crime. They're going to open the border. They're doing things that that's not America. They're doing things that's not Georgia. And right now, as I told people, I'm Georgia born, Georgia bred. When I die, I'll be Georgia dead. I love this state. I love this country. And I will always fight for the people and always fight for this country. Well, you know what? I had election night, uh, live audience, voters' voices. and. Was anyone that was running. Okay, all right, first of all, your ass live in Texas. And you've been living in Texas. They recruited you from Texas, and so you ain't even been living in Georgia the last number of years. But, oh, well, I read the Constitution. It said, we the people, not we the government. Larry. So, the, rolling a couple the, things. The Constitution, Larry, literally spells out the government. I mean, it so literally, think- it literally spells out the governance of the country. It literally spells out the number of people in the Senate, in the House, what age you can run the Supreme Court. I mean, it literally, it said we the people, not we the government. I Go ahead, man. I, I don't have the words, so I'm going to try. So let's unpack this a little bit. First of all, Herschel Walker is is why we have to deconstruct issues about white supremacy. That's first of all. Second of all, he is an embarrassment because all the stereotypes and misconceptions you have a black, about black men, about all those things we have talked about in terms of relationship with men, how he abuses them, et cetera. All this is reinforced, like I said, stereotypes about black men. The other thing is, Roland, it reminds me when I see him at the podium and he was speaking to the, to the crowd and I'm watching the in, people in the crowd look at him. It reminds me of that song, Why Do Fools Fall in Love, or the, way, the way they're looking at him, because he doesn't know what he's talking about. To give an example, he said, instead of the Green New Deal, he said the Green Agenda. So I thought he was going to start talking about green eggs and ham or something like that, because from Dr. Seuss, because it's, it's, the green, it's not the Green Agenda, right? So he can't even name policy positions properly. But this overall is an embarrassment, and I hope the folks of Georgia will um, elect uh, um, brother Senator Warnock in a couple weeks. Just so all the people who are watching, I just want y'all to understand what the Constitution actually says when they invoke we the people. Go to my iPad, Henry, 
It says, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, pr provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. The actual constitution, y'all, lays out the government. It literally lays out, this is what the government is. The House, the Senate, those laws the federal government does not control, the states control those. It lays out the Supreme Court. It lays out when we elect people. It lays out how we elect people. It lays out constitutional amendments. It literally spells out the government. That's why, dumbass Herschel Walker, when someone is sworn in as a House member or as a Senate member or as the president, they literally, they literally recite an oath. They do. Georgia, y'all have got to turn, I'm telling y'all, listen to me very clearly. Do not play games when early voting starts or when you have election day on, on December 6th. These Republicans don't care that he's an idiot. They don't care that he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Georgia, don't do like the Yahoo's idiots in Alabama who elected one of the dumbest people ever in Tommy Tuberville, a former football coach. He's now one of their two United States senators. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot let this man anywhere near the United States Senate. You have got to ensure that you are turning out and you are giving money to the Warnock campaign. Because I, I, I'm, I'm telling y'all, if, if, if which, what we're dealing with here, it, and Republicans do not care, we're dealing with this man potentially being one of the two Georgia senators. It would then be a tie. If Democrats maintain control and they win, it's be 51-49. You lessen the power of uh, you lessen the power of cinema uh, and mansion, and things can get done. But I'm telling y'all, if you play around with the vote, let me let me be clear. Herschel Walker can win. Rebecca, I keep telling these people, he can win. Don't think for a second. When you get to the runoff, it's 50-50. It's 50-50. If folk don't vote, that fool can be the one as a U.S. senator, and he will be there for the next six years, Rebecca. The next six years. Go ahead. So a couple things. I don't know much about Herschel Walker's football career. I'm assuming he was a, a dynamic football player because that apparently is all that he has. But the other thing, let's talk about the Georgia runoff and the reason why you have runoffs in the South. Runoffs in the South were designed because they thought that black voters were less likely to show up a few weeks after um, the general election. That is the sole reason why we have runoffs in the South. So I want to make sure that every black viewer, every black voter in the state of Georgia hears me, hears me clear. This is a scheme to make sure that you don't show up to vote, that you don't show up to make sure that your voice is, is counted, to make sure that you don't have a say in our democracy. So I don't care what you have to do, if you have voter fatigue, if you're sick and tired, if you're still upset that Stacey Abrams didn't win. But I am urging you to show up to vote December 6th. Uh, folks, and as a part of that, Democrats have filed a lawsuit in Fulton County uh, to stop a ban on voting on Saturday on, no on November 26. Uh, so the runoff election, uh, again, it's going to be on December 6, but, 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 the, but, the, but the early voting begins on November 28, except there's a provision that says some counties could start on November 26. Well, now the Republicans have come out and said, oh, no, 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 because of Georgia law, they say it prohibits early voting on Saturday if a holiday falls within two days of it. 
Under state election law, early voting may begin as early as possible. Early voting, again, could be possible on Tuesday, November 22nd, Wednesday, November 23rd, and Sunday, November 27th. Yet, the Republicans are now saying, oh, Raffensperger and the elections chair said, oh, we made a mistake when we said it could be on November 26th uh, because Robert E. Lee, the, that, that, that traitor, domestic terrorist holiday, is the day before the 26th, and so the law is that way. This, this, Michael, was by design by Republicans. See, this is what I keep trying to explain to people. What other reason, what other reason would you pass a law that says you can't have voting within two days of a holiday? What, why? Because they saw the calendar. They don't want early voting on a weekend because they know folk are going to show up and more Democrats will show up. I didn't even know they had uh, Confederate holidays anymore. I thought oh, they- hell yeah, they do. Tennessee does, Alabama, yeah. Mississippi. Look, the Republicans, they celebrate the Confederacy, those white domestic terrorists more than anybody else. That's crazy. And that's South Carolina too. Crazy, hey, hey that's crazy. Um, you know, it'll be interesting. I think well, part, of the, part of the problem is self-inflicted because um, whether there's voter suppression, clearly we know there is. But, you know, the issue is, and I heard, you know, when I was talking to some folks uh, in, in Georgia a couple days ago, I already voted. I voted for Abram. She didn't win. I voted for Warnock. He had more votes, but he didn't win. And now they want me to go vote again? And I'm not suggesting all black Georgians think that way. Clearly, they do not. But there are a group that do feel that way. And we have to fix, no matter when there's an election, I don't care if it's for dog catcher, people of color need to be in line voting for everything, because that is the one way A, your voice is heard, and elections have consequences. So I hope that folks are taking this seriously. I, you know, I, I'm glad that Senator, uh, the Senator of Nevada, Senator Masso won. I mean, I think that's fabulous. But the win also i hope folks don't now feel a letdown in georgia oh we don't really need it doesn't matter we still we kept the senate no this is why what you mentioned rowan is exactly right to balance out machin and cinema we got to have that other seat so it would be wonderful if folks uh, got out and voted in georgia uh, too. And, and, and larry I, I keep trying to tell people don't play around with stupid Th- this was this was tommy tuberville running against Senator Doug Jones in Alabama, and this is Tommy Tuberville discussing the Voting Rights Act. Let me say it again, y'all. This is not an SNL skit. (laughs) This is real. And this idiot is sitting in the United States Senate right now representing Alabama, home of the black belt, the cradle, if you will, the cradle of Voting rights. That so I, I just I, I'm setting up for y'all. So y'all, this is real. Listen. The thing about the Voting Rights Act is, uh, uh, it's you know, you you, you, you there, there's a lot of different things you can look at it as. You know, who's it going to help? Uh, you know, what direction do we need to go with it? Uh, I think it's important that. That with everything we do, we keep secure. We keep an eye on it. It's run by our government, and it's run to to the point that we it, it it's got structure to it. It's like education. I mean, it's got to have structure. Uh, now, for some reason, we look at things to change to think we're going to make it better, but we better do a lot of work on it before we make that change. Larry, he actually said education. Go, go ahead. Listen, please do not ask me to interpret what, that, what he was trying to say, because I have no idea what he was talking about. He talked about the fact that, you know, uh, the Voting Rights Act, and essentially it's kind of, the, it, and, it, and it, um, you know, uh, Jim Crow in America. Or he could have talked about, you know, the impact the 2013 Supreme Court case had on the Voting Rights Act. But listen, we, 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 we won't get into that. And listen, bro, in terms of 
Tuberville, he's he was a, he was a much better coach than he is U.S. senator. And that is not the only clip that I've seen from him say something that makes absolutely no sense. But once again, this is our U.S. senator. And also see a theme a theme here for not only Tuberville being a former coach, but also Hosha Walker being a former player. So listen, let let, let the folks who, who want to coach and be pro athletes, let them retire and go play golf. But we should not allow them to be U.S. senator. And, and listen, we cannot have Herschel Walker for the next six years, you know, be one of two U.S. senators from the state of Georgia. And Roland, the other point is about, you know, we're at, you know, we're more looking at 50 50 in terms of Senate. It's better to be 59, 51, 49, because then we take out some of the nonsense from some of the other U.S. senators we've already mentioned, and also allows Democrats to continue to work for the future to padding that number over the next couple of years. So I need we need black folks and folks in general in Georgia to vote for Senator Warnock so that we can be 50, 51, 49. I literally, Rebecca, have, I mean, that was an actual audio of Tommy Tuberville. It was very disjointed, but he told off on himself with that and with the first line. He said that with the Voting Rights Act, we need to understand who is targeted to help. Who is it supposed to be helping? And I think in that, he told off on himself, even though the rest of what he said was discombobulated and very disjointed and a bunch of non sequiturs. Um, but that's what this is about. I know sometimes some of your viewers and just people in general might be tired of hearing the whole black thing or the whole white and black thing. But let's talk about when it comes down to voting rights in this country. This is about making sure at its root, it was always about making sure that black folks weren't full actualized citizens in this country, that we didn't have a full right, even though we were here at the beginning as well. But it's to dis count us in the history and the making and the foundation of America. And so a lot of these folks who are against uh, making sure that we have a strong um, Voting Rights Act, a lot of folks who are on the side of, of Shelby, a lot of those folks, uh, sorry, those folks who were um, who supported um, gutting um, the Voting Rights Act, sections three and five, it's because they don't want black people voting. So let's be clear. I know some of the people in this scheme now don't want young people voting. They don't want the elderly voting. They don't want the poor voting. They don't want other communities of color within communities of color. But when we look at black folks in this country, that's what this thing was about, was making sure that black folks in this country didn't have the right and the full agency under this constitution in this very country. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's about us. Let's go. Everybody out together. We are in sunny South Dallas. The election is coming up. It's super important that folks know who they are voting for, but more importantly, what they are voting for. Y'all, we got the free shirts and free lunch right over here. Freedom is our birthright. No matter what we're up against, we're sending a message in Dallas and Texas and in the country. We won't back down. That's what this bus tour is all about. The housing cost is one of the most capitalized areas that we have found people who are marginalized that are brown and black. We are suffering the most, and I think that we have the biggest vote and the biggest impact in this election. I'm voting for affordable housing, for sure. We should not be paying the cost of a utility failure because our elected officials are too proud to say we need help. I know that we can bring out our people to vote. It's a part of our birthright. Right. It's a part of our heritage. And surely it's a part of our prison, a part of our future. That's right. That's what's up. And we won't black down. Forward that message to five friends, because in that message, it's got links to how to get registered, how to check your registration status. Like I said, 2.30, we'll start um, rendezvousing right here on this street. I am voting to let our voice be heard in the rural communities that, hey, we are people too. There are things that we need. Free shirts, free food, and lots of power. We are in Longview, Texas, where black voters matter, 365. Whatever type of oppression a white supremacist throws our way, we will not black down. We are in relentless pursuit of liberation of our people. Freedom is liberation for black bodies and black communities to make economic change through political power. 
freedom is choice. We won't black down. 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 Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. Hey, Black. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?